Question 1. What is nanotechnology considered to be? Answer. Nanotechnology is a generic term for the development of innovative materials and applications in various natural science and technical disciplines such as physics, chemistry, biology and medicine, as well as engineering and material sciences. It deals with materials with at least one dimension smaller than 100 nanometers (nm), so-called nanomaterials. With the help of nanotechnology, it is possible to develop structures, techniques and systems in which materials show completely new properties and functions. Industry, medicine, science and consumers hope that this potential will lead to beneficial applications in such areas as robotics, sensory technology, process engineering, biotechnology and medicine as well as for the further development of foods, consumer products and cosmetics. Question 2. What are nanomaterials? Answer. According to the definition of the International Organization for Standardization ISO, manufactured nanomaterials of organic or inorganic origin are differentiated on the one hand into three types of nanoobjects which are smaller than 100 nanometers nm in at least one dimension spherical structures, for example nanoparticles and fullerenes, fibrous structures, for example nanotubes, extremely thin layers, for example nano platelets and into so-called nanostructured materials on the other. Question 3. What are nanocapsules? Answer. Organic compounds such as liposomes, micelles and vesicles, are added to foods to encapsulate other substances such as vitamins or flavorings, transport them through the body and release them at exactly the right spot. As the size of these transport containers is often in the nanometer range, they are also referred to as nanocapsules. Question 4. In which products are nanomaterials already being used? Answer. It has to be assumed today that consumers come into contact with a variety of products in which nanomaterials have been processed. They are used in various ways in consumer products. For instance, nanomaterials are used in food packaging, textiles, kitchen devices, varnishes and paints. They are also used in products for surface sealing and cleaning as well as in polishing agents. Nanomaterials are also used in cosmetics. Titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are used as UV filters in sun creams. For example, nano silver is used as an antimicrobial agent in textiles, and nano clay has various applications in the food packaging sector. Question 5. How are nanomaterials regulated? Answer. There is no nano-specific regulation in the sense of a nanotechnology law. Instead, lawmakers have decided to adapt existing regulations to the new nanotechnology requirements, a process which has not yet been completed. The situation in the individual areas is currently as follows. Nanomaterials are given explicit consideration for the first time in the new cosmetics regulation, EC, number 1223-2009, which is to be applied in full from the 11th of July 2013. According to Article 16 of the EU regulation, cosmetics which contain nanomaterials must be reported to the EU Commission from the 11th of January 2013. In addition to registration in accordance with Article 13 of the EU regulation, notification of cosmetics containing nanomaterials must also be given by electronic means six months before they are put into circulation. Question 6. How can I tell if a product contains nanomaterials? Answer. Consumers cannot recognize with the naked eye whether or not a product contains nanomaterials. They have to rely on a declaration which is not yet mandatory. But this is set to change in the coming years. The marking and labeling of cosmetic products containing nanomaterials is planned from 2013 and this will also apply to foods containing nanomaterials from 2014 in line with the European Food Information Regulation. Although several Several manufacturers already claim in their advertisements that their products use nanotechnology. It cannot currently be established whether they actually contain nanoparticles or other nanomaterials. Question 7. Why are nanomaterials used in cosmetics? Answer. Nanomaterials were taken into account for the first time in the new cosmetics regulation, EC, number 1223-2009 which comes into effect in the EU on the 11th of July 2013. What has been the case up to now for UV filters and will continue to be so in future is that the decision on their inclusion in the positive list of the UV filters authorized in cosmetics will be made by the EU Commission after a risk assessment. It will be made on European level by the Scientific Committee of Consumer Safety, SCCS, formerly SCC, SCCNFP, SCCP, which advises the EU Commission. 
Question 8. Are nanomaterials used in foods? Answer. It is being reported that nanomaterials are used as auxiliaries and additives in foods. For instance, silicic acid and other silicon-containing compounds are said to be used as anti-caking agents or thickeners to prevent table salt crystals and powder form foods from sticking together and to make ketchup or more easily. Silicic acid is also used as a flocculant in wine and fruit juice production. It is not yet clear whether silicic acid is actually used as a nanomaterial. Nanomaterials are also allegedly used specifically as food supplements. There are reports of the use of inorganic materials such as silicon dioxide, colloidal silver, calcium and magnesium in nanoparticle form. It is not clear whether these materials are present in foods as nanoparticles or in aggregate form. The food industry is currently developing functional foods in which vitamins, omega-3 fatty acids, phytosterols and aromas are enclosed in nanocapsules made of organic materials such as liposomes and then released at a specific spot in the body. Question 9. Has there ever been a product in which the nanomaterials cause damage to health? Answer. So far, the BFR has not received any reports about cases in which health damage was shown to have been caused by nanoparticles or nanomaterials. The health disorders, in some cases severe, which occurred in March 2006 after the use of so-called nano-sealing sprays were not due to nanoparticles or other nanomaterials according to the BFR findings. Question 10. What contribution does the BFR make to the investigation of risks caused by nanomaterials? Answer. Together with the Federal Institute for Occupational Safety and Health BA, and the Federal Environmental Agency UBA, the BFR developed a research strategy to identify the potential risks of nanotechnology as far back as 2007 in order to outline the research requirements that exist for the assessment of possible risks and promote the development of suitable test methods and evaluation strategies. Numerous research projects have been initiated in all three involved institutions in the meantime with the result that a new edition of the research strategy to determine the possible risks of nanotechnology was published in 2012. It also contains a balance of the results of already completed projects and describes current activities in the areas of characterization, exposure, toxicological and ecotoxological effects, as well as risk assessment and risk communication. The BFR not only conducts its own research projects. It also combines external expertise on methodical further development. In addition to this, the BFR scientists are involved in larger-scale national and international joint projects and committees. Question 11. What is nanotechnology? Answer. The definition most frequently used by government and industry involves structures, devices, and systems having novel properties and functions due to the arrangement of their atoms on the 1 to 100 nanometer scale. Many fields of endeavor contribute to nanotechnology, including molecular physics, materials science, chemistry, biology, computer science, electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering. Due to the extreme breadth and generality of this definition, many prefer to use the term nanotechnologies for clarity. It is also useful to differentiate between near-term and long-term prospects or to segment the field into first generation through fourth generation stages. Question 12. Why develop nanotechnology? Answer. Gaining better control over the structure of matter has been a primary project of our species since we started chipping flint. The quality of all human-made goods depends on the arrangement of their atoms. The cost of our products depends on how difficult it is for us to get the atoms and molecules to connect up the way we want them. The amount of energy used and pollution created depends on the methods we use to place and connect the molecules into a given product. The goal of nanotechnology technology is to improve our control over how we build things so that our products can be of the highest quality and while causing the lowest environmental impact. Nanotech is even expected to help us heal the damage our past cruder and dirtier technologies have caused to the biosphere. Nanotechnology has been identified as essential in solving many of the problems facing humanity. Specifically, it is the key to addressing the foresight nanotech challenges, providing renewable clean energy, supplying clean water globally, improving health and longevity, healing and preserving the environment, making information technology available to all, enabling space development.
Question 13. How can nanotechnology promise to build products with both extreme precision in structure and environmental cleanliness in the production process? Answer. Traditional manufacturing builds in a top-down fashion, taking a chunk of material and removing chunks of it. For example, by grinding or by dissolving with acids until the final product part is achieved. The goal of nanotechnology is to instead build in a bottom-up fashion, starting with individual molecules and bringing them together to form product parts in which every atom is in a precise designed location in comparison with the top-down approach this method could potentially have much less material left over greatly reducing pollution in practice both top-down and bottom-up methods are useful and being actively pursued at the nano scale however the ultimate goal of building products with atomic precision will require a bottom-up approach